Hey everybody, Eric Hamilton here once again at Lark in the Morning in Berkeley, California. Today I'm going to repair this Curdy Gurdy. One of the tangents is something's not quite right about it. At the factory there was some putty or filler or something put in under this screw here so it's not holding this tangent in place. So we're going to uh, take this key out of here altogether. Repair this tangent first things first. Take this other one off. Just loosen it, slides right out, and this key should release. And so we'll have to take this bar out as well. This will slide right out of here. What I have to do is we'll drill this out, put a little patch in it if it's necessary, and then reseat that screw. And we're going to inspect this. Okay, we might just shore this up with a drop of super glue seal all of these grains and any uh, little loose stuff that's in there. Uh, so I'm just going to seal them <clears throat> both of these slots up with some uh, drop of thin super glue and then we'll clean up the area. And I think that may take care of this whole situation here. I thought we were going to have to drill this out and bush the hole with an, a plug, an ebony plug, and then re-drill. But I'm pretty confident that this is going to take care of the problem. I'll take a toothpick and push things around a little so they don't really bead up so much. And take a look at that. Get it down in the hole. And really seal this up nicely. Give it just a few minutes to dry. Press it in to the grain. Kind of push everything along here. Uh huh. See, we have a little crack on this side, so that may have been the problem. And I'm going to fix that as well. And we'll glue it and put a little clamp on it. Okay, so we'll just let that set up for a little while. We'll come back and try our screws, make sure they fit nice and tightly, and then we'll put it back together again. Seems like that's going to be a pretty simple fix. And we're back, and the tangent is, it's had a good crack in the bottom of it. So that's likely the problem, and we've sealed that up. We'll put some more glue in it. Give it a squirt with this accelerator here, just to help to speed things along. Still a little bit of a high spot where the, the wood is raised up a little bit, so I'm going to trim that back. It's nice and flat. A little bit of color. Even though it's on the underside, no one will see it. Just an aesthetic thing. Rub that in, blend it in. See, still a little bit of a evidence of a crack there, so I'm going to fill that too. Let's sand it just a little bit, just to clean it up. 400 grit paper here. Nothing too extreme. Now I know that bar will slide nice and smoothly in and out of its slot. Okay, so this looks pretty good now. A little bit more color on this corner here. I think we can go back together now. It's definitely sealed up tight. So, let's reassemble. There we go. Nice and smooth. All right, just a matter of putting it back together now. Put the long holder screw in, the one that keeps it from going any further than this. Oh, I'm feeling my way through here because I don't want it to be so tight that it cracks the wood again. Um, but I see that it's got a nice thread in there now. Take this down to the level of the surrounding ones. Okay, so go back in. It's working very smoothly as it should. And let's put our outside this tangent on first. I'm going to use a 1 16th drill bit. Pretty tiny. Just enough to get that get that hole opened up to where it's supposed to be. I don't want to go too crazy. I just want to clean it up. Just get these screws to drop back in. If not, I'll just give it a maybe shoot up to the next size. I prefer not to. It feels like it wants to go in, but we'll give it just another run through here. Just to clean it up. So I'm very gently creating a new thread. I want to go all the way through and then check the back of it to be sure nothing's cracked or pushes that crack open again. I don't anticipate that it will. It's almost through, as you can see, but I don't want to risk losing the screw, the ability to turn the screw because the head is stripped because this is just too tight. So, yes, it has to be tight to hold that 
tangent in place. However, we're going to be able to adjust it too. Open these up just a little bit more. I think I want to turn it with the pliers because I want to preserve that head. It's not a really hard metal, whatever it's supposed to use. I'm going to take it out, obviously, to put it back in and then reinstall it. Um, and at that point, I'll put a little wax on the threads to help it slide real easy right in through there. The threads are nice now, so very happy with that. Let's get our other little screw in place. Let's see if this will just drop right in. Okay, let's get our other screw in place. Seems to be falling in line pretty nicely. Maybe we'll be able to screw this one in easier. Now that's bigger head. So let's go to the next another size. There are ways of dealing with this situation here beyond replacing the screws. I've been known to take a small hacksaw and cut a crosshair in it and use it as a Phillips or flathead screwdriver adjustment. Worked in the past, but with soft metal, there's not a lot you can do really, except get better materials. Very, very tight and that's okay because we're just establishing a new thread here. Just about to come through here. Okay, so now that we have a nice thread in there, let's take these out. Should come out a lot easier than they went in because we now have a thread established. And I want to do this one more time, this time with a little wax on the end of the screw. And that will lubricate this hole and let things slide in and out easily, but hold because they have a good thread. So I'm pleased with the outcome of that one. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So that should just drop right in easily, fairly easily anyway. The screw should work smoothly, but hold tight. And that's our goal. Right. Let's do the same with this guy here and get some wax on it. This is our retainer screw. The one that doesn't allow anything to allow the key to pop out. All right, let's put things back together. Then we are. Put the retainer screw in first. Get it down to the level of the other ones. So that looks pretty much like the surrounding ones. We're going a little deeper. It's got a little wax around the outside, but that's all right. We'll clean that up in just a second. But that's doing what it's supposed to do, just like the others. So let's put these tangents back in. So let's get our first one in place. We'll put the screw in first. Get almost all the way in. And let's get the other screw in there too. One last look at what we've got here. I'm gonna put a little bit more marker on there just to clean that all up nicely. Just drop right in. So the wax on the threads really makes a huge difference. If you can keep that in mind when you're doing this type of thing, it will really, really help you out. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's put the tangents back on. Slide right in, there we go. And we'll just twist it and lock it into place. I'm not going to put it in any particular location because the customer can fine tune that, but that's working just beautifully now. And the second one as well. And while I'm in here, I'm going to go over each one and give it a little snug up and see if there's any more stripped heads. These are feeling pretty good. So, not sure what happened and when. This is theoretically a brand new instrument. So, I shouldn't have any real problems with it, but apparently we do. Everything functions properly at this point, so I'm pretty happy with the repair. Okay, everything seems to be working. 